see that. All right. Judge, you ready? Yep. Time ready? The opposition team. Yes. Great. Let's get started. When we look at the end of the Soviet threat and how the Soviet Union really disbanded, we saw that a bunch of countries were created coming out of the Soviet Union. One of those countries was, in fact, Ukraine. And Ukraine has been a lot in the news lately, especially in their tensions with Russia and over Crimea, which is a province of Ukraine that borders the Black Sea. Now, that's a very key point to make, especially when we'll be looking at the resolution today, which is Vladimir Putin has jumped the shark. Again, Vladimir Putin has jumped the shark. We stand resolved that this is, in fact, true. Let's take a look at two points of resolution of analysis, actually three. And discussing the idea behind this resolution, first of all, we believe that this is a metaphor resolution, and as the government team, we do have the right to define. So let's take a look at that second resolution analysis point. We're going to be defining two key terms of the resolution. First of all, Vladimir Putin. We believe that he is the president of Russia, and it's just Vladimir Putin in today's right. <laughs> let's take a look at the second point of or second definition. Now we need to find jump to the shark. Now this is a very uh, this is a very strange idiom, but it essentially means John Hine created this to mean the idea that something is declining in quality. He's reached a pinnacle point, and now he's now declining. So when we look at the resolution, it now means that Vladimir Putin has simply reached a pinnacle point and is now in decline. And the third point of resolutional analysis, we like to parameterize this round down to the Ukrainian revolution because that's what's really been going on in the news lately, and because of the fact that this is probably one of the most uh, probably the most uh, likely things that we'll be debating, and it's probably the most predictable thing. So on the grounds of predictability, we like to parameterize this round down to the Ukrainian revolution. We like to we like to present one contention in today's round. This contention basically supports the main idea that Vladimir Putin has simply jumped the shark in regards to the Ukrainian revolution. So this first contention is that Russian and Ukrainian tensions have increased, meaning Vladimir Putin has jumped the shark. Russian and Ukrainian tensions have increased, meaning Vladimir Putin has jumped the shark. Before we look at the link to why this is in fact true, let's take a look at sub point A, the background, and really exploring what's going on right now. The first background point we have is basically the reason for invasion. The Financial Times explored this in October of 2014. Basically, they talked about the economic reasons for why Russia is in fact invading Crimea right now. They've actually started doing, uh, they've sent the military forces into Crimea to try and secure and annex that land because of the Black Sea. Now, that's a very key important term. When we look to Russia as a whole, and we look at the geography of where they are positioned. They have a bunch of cold water ports. They have absolutely no warm water ports. Crimea recently closed off their only warm water ports, which was the Black Sea, to Russia. Russia really wants that Black Sea for economic reasons, and that's the reason for invasion. Again, that was stated by the Financial Times. The second point under the background is he used the diplomatic means in October. The second background point is he used diplomatic means in October. Now that's a very key crucial point because when we look at now today and the fact that he's militarily invading, we look at before he really wasn't doing that. He was using diplomatic means to achieve his goals. In fact, he went to a, a, a meeting with the European Union and trying to persuade Ukraine to allow them access to the Black Sea. So we can really see before, in October, he was using diplomatic means. He was using negotiations. That was stated by Bloomberg on October 2013. So we see the evolution of Putin's theory is the idea that, well, we can't use negotiations, so let's militarily invade. And that's going to be looking at the link now. So point B is the link. There will be two links here. First of all, the tipping point was military invasion. Military invasion. Again, when we look back to the metaphor of jump to the shark, we really need a strong pinnacle, a tipping point at which uh, the, a climactic occurrence, and then we will see a steady decline in the quality of Mr. Vladimir Putin. And we really see that this climactic tipping point was indeed military invasion. In fact, John Kerry had a, a quote in 2014. He told Sergei Lavrov, who's basically the Russian equivalent to the Secretary of State, that invasion made negotiations impossible. What this shows us is that the United States and the world at large sees Russia's invasion of Crimea as a direct act of war. And we, what we really see is that Putin has jumped the shark. This is the climactic point at which Putin has now fallen into decline. The second link here is that the mindset has changed. The mindset has changed. I'll get to your point Evan, after I'm done with this analysis here. So when we look back to what I talked about under background point number one, he used diplomatic means in October, and slowly his mindset has evolved to the point of we need to use military intervention to solve our problems. Yes, Evan? 
So when you were discussing that the tipping point was military invasion, do you believe that using a different means is lower quality? But what I'm saying is, is that he's not really using the different means right now. The point is, he's not using, what we're looking at here is not how the quality has changed, we're looking at how Vladimir Putin's character has changed. Because we're not looking at Russia as a whole, we're looking specifically at Vladimir Putin. We're looking at the methods that he's using. So yes, I guess you could say that's, that's a very uh, clear point to make. Let's take a look at subpoint C, which is now the impact and discussing the overall major impact to military intervention. And the, the simple fact of the matter is that military intervention and invasion will eventually lead to annexation. That was essentially Putin's main goal. Now, the opposition team might come back up here and talk about how no annexation will be the tipping point. Putin has not jumped the shark because he has not yet annexed Crimea. However, what we really see here is the fact that the major tipping point was military invasion. Military invasion is the, will lead to annexation. That's essentially the end result. Nothing really will happen after that, so we won't see a steady declining quality. We have to look at how uh, Vladimir Putin will have a steady declining quality, and that was because of military invasion. So when we look at today's resolution, we see that uh, Vladimir Putin has really jumped the shark. He jumped the shark when he military, uh, militarily invaded Crimea, and the rest of the world sees and agrees with that. So it's for all these reasons, that's why I'm going to vote for the government team. Thank you very much. All right, so if the judge is ready. And the timer. And Hendricks. Yes. All right, let us begin. There's an old joke that goes, in Soviet Russia, Waldo, find you. <laughs> it is because I believe that Vladimir Putin is not losing his popularity and has not jumped the shark that I stand in opposition to the resolution and ask you cast a negative opinion on the resolution. When we're first examining a counter definition we'd like to provide, then we'll be looking down at my case and then we'll be examining my opponent's case. Let's first look at their resolutional analysis point two, where they provided a definition for jumping the shark. I'd like to provide a definition from the Urban Dictionary that provides some more clarification as to what jumping the shark actually means. The definition is jumping the shark is a term to describe a moment when something that was once great has reached a point where it will now decline in quality and popularity. Now the reason why I'm using the Urban Dictionary is because it is a dictionary of idioms and it is a common man definition. So when we look at what the Urban Dictionary is saying, it provides more context by showing how and when somebody has jumped the shark. So now we looked at the counter definition and the reason to prefer our definition. Yes, I'll take your question. Um, so when looking back at the Urban Dictionary, wouldn't you agree with me that it's similar to Wikipedia in it of the fact that anybody can edit and change the definitions? Yeah, I believe so. I believe that it is lending itself credibility towards this point because the term jump the shark is an idiom. And so being an idiom, a common phrase that is something in the culture, I believe using something that is editable by the culture should be upheld and preferred in today's round over an operational definition. So now let's examine our case. We'd like to provide a value or a weighing mechanism for the round to determine whether Putin has jumped the shark. The value you can define as power. Power. Power is our definition because we will be, or power is our value. It is the weighing mechanism to determine whether Putin has really jumped the shark. Now let's examine contention one. Jumping the shark implies losing grip. Jumping the shark implies losing grip. Our application is of happy days. Happy days. The term, the term jumping the shark came after the wildly popular show Happy Days ended. And it was in the last season and one of the main characters went on this ridiculous rampage across the ocean in these water skis and jumped over a shark cage. And so what this implies is that you're losing the, your grip of popularity and power if you are jumping the shark. So now let's move on to contention two. Putin has a firm grip on power. Putin has a firm grip on power. We can see this in CNN News on February 22nd of this year that Putin is, Putin is the puppet master of the Ukrainian crisis. So what we can see from this is that Putin has his hands in the Ukrainian crisis. He is not losing influence. He is not jumping the shark. Despite what the international community might think of him, he has not jumped the shark because he is still having control. He still has a grip. We can also see this in the Washington Post on February 23rd, that Russia and Putin have the leverage to move the international community in the Ukrainian crisis and are willing to use it. We can again also see this in the Japan Times on February 21st of this year, that Russia and that Russia and Putin are using strongman tactics to resort to stifling tactics used over 30 years ago. Vladimir Putin is using these tactics from 30 years that are still popular in Russia. He was a former KGB agent. And so we can see that he is not losing his power. He has not jumped the shark. 
Let's look at our second contention, our third and final contention, that the Russian people love Vladimir Putin. Our third and final contention is that the Russian people love Vladimir Putin. We can see this in the Washington Post just today, this morning, on March 14th, that Putin's popularity has skyrocketed to a three-year high in Russia. Now, what we can see from this is that Putin has not jumped the shark. He has not reached a point where he is declining in quality of leadership or popularity by any stretch of the imagination. Putin is at an all-time high in popularity in Russia. We need to show, we, this shows that he hasn't jumped the shark. We can also see this in the Japan Times on December 27th, a couple months ago. Putin is completely outflanking the West, and this has been the year of Vladimir Putin's ascendancy. So again, we can examine with looking at our case that we have a we have an important background of what jumping the shark is. We've then seen how Vladimir Putin does not fulfill this criteria. Now let's examine a couple of points in the opponent's case. Looking into the resolution analysis point three, he discussed that we should only look at the Ukrainian revolution. I believe we need to look at the situation in Russia as a whole, and with international relations and with the people in the country. I have three reasons to prefer this interpretation. First of all, jumping the shark implies a limited audience. It implies a limited audience. When Happy Days ended, it was, it was jumping the shark for its audience. It wasn't jumping the shark for the entire culture or for a specific conflict or for a specific instance. It was simply jumping the shark for its own audience. So jumping the shark implies that it is a limited criteria of an audience, not a conflict. The second reason to prefer is that the resolution is not implying Ukraine. It is not implying Ukraine. The resolution doesn't have the parametrization of Ukraine. It is simply saying, has Vladimir Putin jumped the shark? Has he lost power? Ukraine might be a part of this equation, but it is certainly not the only part of this equation. My third reason to prefer is that popularity is dependent on more than one event. It is dependent on more than one event. Vladimir Putin had many different factors come together to help him reach the presidency. And the Ukrainian crisis is one recent event that is impacting his popularity for the better. However, popularity is more, a man is defined by more than just one event when he is in office. There are many different sides to look at, a kaleidoscope of different issues with Vladimir Putin's presidency. Let's examine their only contention that Vladimir Putin has jumped the shark under their B point under the lake. He said that the tipping point was the military invasion. However, my response is that Putin has invaded because of his high popularity in Crimea. So you can tag my response as because of high popularity. Putin has invaded the Crimea and he has not jumped the shark because, I'm sorry, this is a protected time. I would have loved to have answered that question. Putin has the power to invade in Crimea. He has the ability. He has not lost quality of leadership or popularity. So the reason, real, this is not the tipping point for jumping the shark. It is rather the tipping point for more ascendancy in the power and grip of Vladimir Putin. So overall, when we examine today's resolution, we have seen that it has proven false. Vladimir Putin has not jumped the shark because he has the power, he has the means, he has the resources to be able to continue his firm grip on Russian society. In Soviet Russia, Vladimir Putin, find you. Thank you. started off this week by talking about how a quotation, a definition from the Urban Dictionary meant that uh, once great and is now in decline, basically referring to popularity. However, I believe the definition will uh, is essentially the entire crux of the opposition team's case, and I'll be showing you through a couple of reasons why their definition does not stand. And Alton, if you look to the fact that their definition mentioned popularity, their entire case falls if this is not the correct definition. Make that note. So if, we, if the government team uh, wins this definition, then we should win the entire round. 
There are two reasons why you should prefer the government team's definition. My first response, actually three, three responses. My first response is not a credible source. Not a credible source. Urban Dictionary is a lot like Wikipedia in which you have the, uh, uh, somebody who puts up a definition and literally anybody can edit it. If you look up your own name, you'll uh, look up the meaning of your own name, you'll see things like, oh, uh, Ryan is a sexy beast. Is that really true? Well, in some cases for you, yes, but uh, my cousin Ryan is definitely not a sexy beast. Anybody can alter the meaning of the name, and any, anybody can meaning, uh, alter the meaning of this word, therefore this is an incredible source. My second response is government team source. Government team source. Now we actually had in the original creator of the actual idiom, John Hine. We took it from the creator of the original idiom, and he said that it, uh, something has reached its prime and is declining in quality, not popularity, but in quality. That makes the key distinction that the quality of yes. So would you would you agree or disagree that the show Happy Days, where the idiom is derived, did indeed decline both in quality and popularity yeah, I'll, yeah. in Jumping the Shark? I'll, I'll be getting to that later, actually. Sure. So my second response is John Hine, creator of the idiom itself, actually signs with the government team that it's talking about the quality of something, not the popularity of something. Therefore, it's the quality of his foreign policy, not the popularity of his foreign policy. And I believe this quality of, the quality of his foreign policy is declining. My third response is uh, Gov has right to define. The government team simply has the right to define in today's debate round. That's what we as the government team's power and ground is given to. We have the right to define these definitions. Therefore, we should still be siding with the government team at the end of today's debate round. That's what the parley gives us as the, as the government team. Let's now look at uh, the uh, opposition team's case, starting at the top of the flow with the value of power. I have three responses. My first response is value, not power. Value, not power. Now, if you look to the quality of his foreign policy, that doesn't deal with the power of it. That deals with how we handle situations, which is why we have this uh, resident Korea of Crimea, which we will be uh, looking at later. But the value should not be power. My second response is jumping shark does not reference power. Jumping shark, jumping the shark does not reference power in any way. We're talking about the quality of his foreign policy, again, not the popularity of his foreign policy. And my third response is foreign policy is the way to win. Foreign policy is the way to weigh this round. If you look at the quality of his foreign policy, we can see that before and back in October, he was using diplomatic relations, which is an acceptable point. But at the, it's the tipping point, his foreign policy started declining when he started using military intervention in response to the Ukrainian situation. Let's now look at the three responses provided by my opponents. The first contention was of uh, implies losing grip, and they mentioned the application of happy days. Two responses here. My first response is resolu resolution analysis point number three, which is that we're parameterizing to Crimea. Again, we'll look at Res A3 later, but again, we're parameterizing the situation down to Crimea. My second response is original creator. Original creator. Note that they didn't actually have a quotation from Happy Days. They just discussed what happened to the show of Happy Days. We have the original quotation from the original creator of the actual idiom saying that it's the quality of something, not the popularity of something. And also, furthermore, the government team has the right to define this definition in today's bearing. And therefore, Happy Days has absolutely no bearing on this round. Note that they had no quotations from what the actual idiom meant. Therefore, we should still be taking the government's uh, team's uh, side on this. Let's look at contention number two, talking about how Putin has power. Two responses. Power, not important. Power, not important. Again, power is not important if he's having terrible foreign policy. He can be the most powerful person on the world, and if he has terrible foreign policy and he's a terrible person character-wise, then that means he is in decline and should still be siding with the resolution. My second response is, uh, my, my second response is actually links in the case links the case. When he says that he's the puppet master of Ukrainian power and he's doing things that basically not give him more power, then that means he has even worse foreign policy and that means his foreign policy is again further declining. Look at their recent cards talking about how uh, uh, Vladimir Putin is basically stepping all over Crimea. That's terrible foreign policy and therefore his foreign policy is in decline. Let's look at this contest number three talking about Putin popularity. Again, uh, two responses. My first response is mindset. Mindset. It's Putin's mindset that is being affected. That's what's declining, not the popularity of Russia. My second response is we're not talking about popularity. Popularity is irrelevant, and that's why the entire government team's or opposition team's case hinges on popularity because they say uh, Putin's popularity is increasing. However, we're not discussing popularity. Let's now discuss resolution analysis point number three, talking about how we're parameterizing this down to the Ukrainian situation. He had one response and then three reasons to prefer. I have three overall responses. Then we'll take a look at his reasons to prefer. My first response is looking at Crimea because it's recent. 
looking at Crimea because it's recent. Simply, this is the most recent situation in which we can view uh, Mr. Putin's foreign policy, and therefore we should be looking at uh, Crimea as a whole. My second response is Gallup has right to define. Again, I'm going to be using this phrase a lot. The government team has the right to define. Sure, the opposition team has the right to counter define. However, we as the government team automatically have presumption because we have the right to define. My third and final response is predictability. Predictability. Essentially, this reason for it was never addressed by my opponents. My partner brought this up in his very first speech, talking about how this should be, uh, we, should, we should be looking at Ukraine because this is the most predictable outcome. This is the most predictable, predictable situation regarding Russia. So now we'll take a look at his uh, reason to prefer. Now, basically, all of them were talking about how, number, actually, let's get his first and third response. He's talking about limited audience and popularity is dependent on more than one area. I have one response to both of these, and my one response is definition does not include popularity. Definition does not include popularity, just the mindset of President Putin. Now let's look at his reason to prefer number two, talking about how the resolution does not state Ukraine. Again, my response is predictability. Predictability. This is the most predictable, predictable thing that's been going on in the news. In fact, it's the only, really only major thing regarding Russia's foreign policy, and thus because we've parameterized this do round down as the government team, this round down to foreign policy in Ukraine, you should still be citing the government team's case. Let's look at that case now. He had one response to the entirety of the case, so please throw flow through background point number two. Link one, talking about how the tipping point was military. Number two, talking about how his mindset has changed. Those were both unaddressed. And finally, the impact, talking about a military intervention will lead to annexation, which is obviously bad. His one response was talking about invasion because of popularity. Two responses. First response, popularity is not the cause of military intervention. Popularity is not the cause of military intervention. You don't go intervene in another person's region because you're popular. That would mean that every high school quarterback would go invade something. My second response is look at source. Look at the source. My partner read a quotation from the Financial Times talking about how the reason for the invasion was the uh, warm port in, in Crimea, and that's the reason that he's invading for economic reasons. So it's for all these reasons that I strongly urge to vote for the government team. Thank you very much. All right, these are the judge ready? Yep. Are you timer? Not ready. All right, I'm All right. Got the timer ready? Yes. All right, let's begin. Starting in the speech, I'm going to be starting off at the top of the flow with the definition debate, starting with uh, the definition of jump the shark, talking about declining in quality or the popularity. Um, and my first point is that high popularity shows high quality. High popularity shows high quality. Now, talking about the show, Happy Days, uh, the show, when the quality was high, when they had original and good ideas, the popularity was higher at the time. It was one of TV's most popular shows. However, when the quality started declining, the popularity also declined. So my second reason is, my second argument on the definition is measuring stick, measuring stick. What we can see is that because of the high popularity of the Russian people liking their leader, it obviously shows that his quality of leadership is high. High quality leads to high popularity, and because he is popular, as my opponent read evidence from this morning actually, which said that his popularity is at the highest point in the last three years, we can see that the high popularity shows uh, it, is, it is connected to the high level of uh, quality, yes. Uh, now, going back to your first point, you talked about how high popularity shows high quality. Yes. Both Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and Adolf Hitler had a, a popularity rating of over 70%. Were these men in high quality? Uh, these men, uh, I guess their job was, um, their job, it was not, it's not the same type of quality as far as uh, Adolf Hitler was killing his people in his own country and I believe that Vladimir Putin, in his situation, his job is to protect his own people, his job is to keep his people at sa at safe and he's not doing similar things to what Hitler was, killing his own people. So I'd say that it's a different scenario and you can't just compare that on popularity. Um, now my, uh, my third reason here is common man definition, my third reason to prefer is common man definition. We can see that popularity is a clear and predictable measuring stick by which we can see that his quality is higher. When the quality declines, the popularity also declines. And so uh, this is an important uh, aspect of today's debate around in this definition debate. Now going to my opponent's one and only contention, uh, he, uh, my response is that it was more popular within Russia. More popular within Russia. When we look at the, the job that Vladimir Putin has, his job is to protect his own people. It is to do what's best for his country. That is his audience, so to speak. If we think of it in the metaphor of the Happy Days theme song, they're not trying to be popular for the whole world, for the international community. They're trying to be popular for their viewers, for the people that they are putting their product out for. Now, the leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin, he's not doing this. His job is not to make the world a better place. It's not, his job is not to help 
the international community is to protect and help his own people, which is what he's doing as this popularity in, sh in Russia shows. It's already been more popular in Russia. Now going to their second uh, point in contention one, um, where they talked about di diplomatic means in October, and they said how he is obviously jumping the shark because he used diplomatic means and now he is using, uh, now he is using military means. My response is different, not lower quality different, not lower quality. They're trying to draw a link that shows because he changed his mindset that it shows a lower quality. However, it does not show a lower quality. It shows a different medium by which he's trying to achieve his goal. It's just a different medium by which he's doing this. Yes? Damaging human rights is an inherently bad thing, yes? Uh, yes. All right. So he's going, um, Vladimir Putin, back to my point where he um, He's using a different medium to gain his goal. So what this shows with his quality of, with his character, what it shows is that he tried one instance, and if it failed, then he did his job and effectively in a different role, in a different role. If we look at the value of power that the opposition team has brought up, the definition is the ability or capacity to perform effectively. Now we look at what Vladimir Putin is doing, his goal, he is effectively performing his, his duties. He's effect, he, effect, he has a, an effective grip on his power. And I think this is a key point in the debate round. Now going to, down under sub point B, and the link where they talk about the tipping point and military uh, invasion, um, we go down and um, my response is that he has not lost popularity. He has not lost popularity. We can see, uh, according to the evidence of my opponent, Red, his, his popularity is high. His quality of leadership is uh, tied to his popularity. And um, now going to, um, going to their argument about predictability. Um, predictability, I believe this was on the definition debate. They talked about how we need to have a predictable standard. If we look at the, the, op the standards that the opposition team has brought up of power and popularity, that is predictable. We can predict whether someone has the ability or, cap or uh, capacity to perform effectively. We can also predict um, the popularity of his, according to statistics and such that we have provided. So this is a very predictable standard, so this argument should fall in the debate round. Now going to, um, this is evidence concerning the power that Vladimir Putin has, and this is um, December uh, 2013, it says, quote, uh, this is from the capital of Armenia where Vladimir Putin was quoted in this card, quote, Russia has never intended to go away from here. We'll be strengthening our positions in the Transcaucus, uh, drawing upon the, all the best that we have inherited from our ancestors drawing upon good relationship with all the countries of the region, including America. So we can see what Vladimir Putin is showing, saying in, from this quote in 2013. He's saying that he still has a firm grip on the situation, and he's also showing that he's trying to reach out to the international community, including America, and uh, reach out to them. Yes. This is Vladimir Putin saying his foreign policy is good, right? Yes. <laughs> So Vladimir Putin is saying his foreign policy is good, and if we look at the audience that he is speaking to, his audience is his own people, and his audience, they believe that he's good. They believe that he that he is doing the right thing, and he is protecting his people, he's fulfilling his job, his job role, so to speak. Now going to, um, they talked about their reasons to prefer their definition, and they brought up three reasons. They said number one was not credible source, number two was government team source, and number three was, uh, I'm not sure number, uh, uh, that was the government's uh, ability to define. Now starting with number one, not credible source, my response is that it's common man standard. Common man standard. When we look at this debate round today, we need to look at it in a standard that is held to by the common man. If you ask the, American, uh, the average American debating, what does jump the shark mean? They would think, people would think of the Happy Days TV show. And if we look at that standard, we can see the tie between quality and the tie between popularity. Now their second response is that government team source. Government team source. Well the uh, author of the TV show was their source and, uh, or sorry, the writer of the TV show. And in the, in the TV show, we saw that when the quality went down, they lost their grip, they lost their power over their ideas, and so they started jumping the shark. Well, Vladimir Putin has a grip on his power. He has not jumped the shark. Vote opposition. Thank you. All right, so the judge is ready. Timer and Hendricks. All right, let's begin. In Soviet Russia, many years back, there was this man going to a car dealership, and he went to the car dealership and he said, "All right, I want, I want to pick out this car." And the car dealership would say, "Okay, we're going to deliver that to you in about ten years." 
and the man says, well, are you coming in the morning or in the evening? And the car dealership says, well, why does that even matter? And the man said, because I have the plumber coming in the morning. Now, what we can see from this humorous example is that the quality of leadership in Russia has significantly increased. The Russian leadership back in the day, the USSR, certainly jumped the shark because they weren't popular with the people and they weren't having a grip on the, their economy. They weren't able to produce enough cars and weren't able to produce enough goods and services so that it would have to be 10 years out from now. So what we can see is that the resolution is fundamentally false because Vladimir Putin has not jumped the shark. He has improved the quality of leadership and he is popular in Russia. So we'll be examining some specific points that the, our opponents have made. Then we'll be examining three main voting issues. So let's first jump down to our case that we presented. Under the value of power, he said, first of all, the value is not power. My response is that they haven't provided a value. They haven't provided a value. We are the ones who have provided a value, a weighing mechanism. They haven't provided a weighing mechanism to determine the round. So it is assumed that power and influence is what we are going to use for today's round. Under the jumping the shark point, he said that jumping the shark does not reference power. My response is that it does, because in the definition, it's responding to the influence that a leader has or that a television show has. So it certainly implies power, the ability to communicate ideas. And the third point, he said that foreign policy is the way. Foreign policy is the way. And my response is that we need to have a way to determine foreign policy. We need to have a way to determine foreign policy. Now let's examine the first contention. He said under happy days that we cited the original creator. And my response is um, uh, look at what my argument, uh, my opponent, my partner's argument that the happy days creator's definition is in line with our definition of both quality and popularity. Looking under the next point, under the second contention, he said that power is not important. And my response is that power is essential in order to not jump the shark. Power is essential to not jump the shark. If you don't have power, you jump the shark. If you, the Happy Days TV show did not have influence, did not have power, lost quality, lost popularity, thus they weren't a good show anymore. They jumped the shark. So power is an integral part, and it's an integral part of the equation to jumping the shark. Looking under the next part, he said that he has an even worse foreign policy. My response is, whose viewpoint? Whose viewpoint? They may say, and the United States may say, that Putin has a worse foreign policy, but in the eyes of the Ukrainian people in Crimea and in the eyes of Russia, he is having a better, higher quality foreign policy. Again, examine the piece of evidence from this morning that I cited into the Washington Post that Putin's popularity is at a three-year high. Now let's examine their case. Looking into the response he provided, he said under the argument I made under Crimea, I said that we, the invasion was because of popularity in Crimea. He said, this is under contention uh, one, sub one B, the links. He said, first of all, the popularity is not the cause of military intervention. My response is that popularity to protect the people, to protect the people. Vladimir Putin himself is saying that he is invading Ukraine into Crimea in order to protect Russian nationals. Looking under the next one, he said, look at the source. Look at the source. My response is that the source doesn't contradict. The source doesn't contradict. Now let's get into my three main voting issues. My first voting issue is of jumping shark's true meaning. Jumping shark's true meaning. I have three reasons why you should vote for the opposition under this point. The first point you can tag as losing grip. Losing grip. Jumping the shark truly means that you are losing your grip and you are declining in both quality and popularity. Even if you agree with the government team that popularity isn't part of the equation, and even if you agree that we should only be looking at the Ukrainian revolution and not Russia as a whole, we have still disproven their analysis because we have shown that Vladimir Putin has the power, he has not jumped the shark. Looking under the second reason to prefer our interpretation is that quality implies popularity. Quality implies and needs popularity. In order to have good quality, in order to be able to effectively use policy, you must have popularity. The third reason to prefer is of original context. Original context. Again, examining happy days, examining where Russia has come, where they are now, we can see that our interpretation should be preferred. The second voting issue is that Putin is powerful. Putin is powerful, both in Ukraine and in Russia. So those are our two subpoints, Ukraine and Russia. Our third voting issue is that Putin has not jumped the shark. Putin has not jumped the shark. So please vote for the opposition team. We have fulfilled our burden in today's round. I strongly urge you to vote for opposition.
we're ready. Go ahead, let's get started. In this final speech of this round, we're going to be looking at four main voting issues and showing you why a government ballot is warranted. We're first going to be addressing the definition debate, and if, if you if you stand with the government team's definition, I do believe that you should be voting for the government team at the end of today's debate round. The second voting issue we're going to be examining is the idea between power versus foreign policy. Thirdly, we're going to be looking at parametrics, and fourth and finally, we're going to be looking at the critical point. Let's take a look at the first voting issue now and discussing the definitions. Now we have a competing definition from the opponent's side, and they talk about how basically their definition is essentially popularity. That's what jumping the shark means, how it's a decline in popularity. On the side of the government team, you have a decline in quality. So now we can clearly see the two competing sides. You have quality versus popularity. And before I move to some analysis, I'd just like to point out one point that was crucially dropped by the opposition team, the right to define. Whether or not it's contextually true that their definition is true, you should be still siding with the government team because of the fact that the government team has the right to define in this debate around the point was never addressed and it was dropped by the opposition speakers. Let's now take a look at the analysis behind the two definitions. And, and first of all, we need to take a look at the fact of the credible source. And they came up here and well said early dictionary is a common man source. Um, point of order. Yes. Um, stop the time, please. Aye. Paused. Under your argument when you said that we were, it was popularity versus quality, yes. our definition actually said both quality and popularity, so I humbly submit that you misrepresented our position. I'll, I'll, I'll be explaining that uh, uh, as, okay, uh, in response to that. Uh, actually, what your partner said was that popularity leads to high quality, not the other way around. Okay, all right, uh, timer ready? Great. So let's take a look at the definitions. Again, moving out back to the credible source idea. We have the urban dictionary versus the actual creator. And then Ed comes up and talks about the contextuality of this definition. However, we need to understand that he's adding words to what John Hine originally said. What he originally said is referencing quality, not popularity. While it might be contextually true, we need to look at what, the, what he actually said. So because of these reasons, we should be looking to the government team's definition today's bear out, again, because of the right to define. The second voting issue I have is a power versus foreign policy. Power versus foreign policy. Now, Evan kind of misconstrues our points uh, in, in under the value point. He brings up the value of power, and then my, my partner comes up and says, well, the value's not power. And he says, well, we never provided one. Actually, we did. My partner brought up the fact that the foreign policy was the way to weigh. We looked at that under both the definition and resolution analysis point number three in discussing the idea of predictability. The most predictable ground in this case is the Ukrainian revolution. That's what's most in the news, and that's what the literature base stands by. When we look to foreign policy today, that's what we should be looking at. Foreign policy popularity versus foreign policy quality. Again, foreign policy quality has declined, therefore we can clearly see the facts that you should be voting for the government team. And so let's take a look now down at the voting issue. Actually, let's take a look at further under this point in discussing the idea of popularity. Now, they came, came up and kept on saying popularity from the, Ru the Russians is, is, is absolutely, uh, it, that basically Putin's very popular with Russian people. Uh, two points under this. First of all, Adolf Hitler and Bashar al-Assad were both very popular people that they also abused their citizens in the same way that Vladimir Putin is committing human rights abuses against the Crimean people. Secondarily, we need to see that the international community matters as well. Again, the international community uh, matters as well. Don't let the opposition team uh, make you think that popularity only stems from the government's people. No, that's absolutely not true. It also stems from the international community as well. And when we look at this resolution, that's absolutely pertinent. Let's take a look at the uh, third voting issue now and deciding the parametrics of today's round. The parametrics in, in discussing the idea of the Ukrainian revolution. Again, the government team has the right to define in this case. And we can actually see the recency of this and the predictability all lie with the government team. These were three crucial points. First of all, that Crimea is recent. Second of all, that the government has the right to define. And third of all, predictability. We believe that this round should be parametricized down to the Ukrainian revolution because of the, it's the most simply predictable ground. If you type in Russia, you're going to get stuff on the Ukrainian revolution. That's just a simple fact. Let's take a look at the fourth and final voting issue, which is talking about the critical point. The critical point. And this is going to be talking and majorly discussing about contention number one and discussing the, the, the jumping the shark. Where, at what point, did Vladimir Putin jump the shark? We stated that he jumped the shark when he militarily intervened in Crimea. Now, look at the background point that we explored. We explored the idea that before he was using diplomatic means. Now, their response to this was that, well, it's different, not lower quality. My response here is human rights abuses. Vladimir Putin, uh, Putin is abusing the rights of Crimean citizens. This is a definite decrease in quality, as we can see from the fact that he's killing actual civilians in Crimea. His foreign policy has declined in quality because he's committing gross human rights abuses. 
The reason for invasion we really see is because he wants economic power in the Black Sea. So the tipping point really leads to military intervention. And the overall point behind this is the idea that he has no point to come back from. And the impact is that it eventually leads to annexation. Now the response to some point B, the link, the first point, their only response is that he, he hasn't really lost popularity. Again, that's irrelevant in this debate round. That is irrelevant. Whether or not he's lost popularity in Russia is a completely irrelevant point because of the fact that he's lost popularity in the international spectrum, as well as the fact that he's committing gross human rights abuses. So when we look at the quality of Vladimir Putin's foreign policy, I strongly urge you to stand the result that Vladimir Putin has jumped the shark. Thank you very much. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job.